everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we won't have any further information on Reichbusters Project Vril, Enchanters, or Hell the Last Saga. Just another short update on Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, but some pretty neat stuff to show you. We have received the Mold Master resin copies from the factory. They finished the molds and produced some minis to see how they turned out. We certainly like what we see, so take a look. What do you think? For Solomon Kane today, just a short update to say that QML has received the third of six containers in all. So more North American shipments will be going out soon. Now, please remember, if you don't get an address verification email from them at this time, there's no cause for worry. There are still no less than three containers of Solomon Kane still en route. We realize how excruciating this must be for those who are still waiting to receive their copies. If we could speed those three remaining containers along at all, we most certainly would. So please be patient for just a little while longer. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, we just wanted to pass along a hearty thank you from us to you for a successful campaign. We ended on Friday afternoon with no less than 8,292 backers that pledged $582,922. Thank you so much for your support. Now, one thing to note is that this number neither includes the retailers who also contacted our retail department to place orders for their stores, nor some of the distribution talks that are happening for Super Fantasy Brawl right now. So stay tuned, folks. We are far from over. Moving on to Steam Watchers today, just another short update this week, but again, some really cool stuff to show. We have received the plastic, final colored, final quality minis from the factory. Now, we asked that they tweak the colors a bit when we received the white sample of the game, and these are the corrected plastic samples that they sent and we have since approved. Unlike the Joan of Arc minis earlier, these are final product quality samples. So things production-wise for Steam Watchers are progressing well. Torchbearers, as we have discussed in previous updates, the most recent things we were working on were the bosses, a very important part of the game. But we've also talked about other aspects of the games that we revisit from time to time to work on and make necessary adjustments in, in order to continually improve the experience wherever possible. Today, we want to talk about the quests, another important part of the game. 
As most of you probably know by now, the game is divided into two equally important parts. The Hamlet phase, when heroes have the chance to spend their hard-earned gold and experience points in order to tend to both their physical and mental wounds, train, purchase equipment and provisions, while at the same time help to rebuild the Hamlet to its former glory. Now, this phase is important because it will help the heroes as they progress through the campaign as things become darker and deadlier. Then there's the questing phase, when heroes will be tasked to visit various perilous locations in order to accomplish specific tasks. So, at the end of the Hamlet phase, the heroes will draw quest cards of the appropriate level and will choose one which they will undertake. A quest card has the following information. First of all, the objective of the quest and the way that you gain experience points, the amount of camp supplies you have available during the quest, any special rules, and the type and number of rooms you will face. A quest can be something simple, like the quest Scout Ahead, where you just need to clear as many rooms as possible with no special rules. Or it can be something trickier, like the quest Dim the Bones, where you have to locate specific tomb rooms and collect the sacred bones found there. A very important aspect that applies to every quest of the Darkest Dungeon is the fact that there is a push-your-luck element to them. And what we mean is that in every quest, you can earn up to a maximum of three experience points, but you can also abandon the quest at any time. This is something that creates an interesting dynamic and enhances player agency because you will have the option to choose when to push and when to play it safe. So that's all for now, but before we go, we would like to share with you a thought. We've seen that the hero spotlights are something that are generally enjoyed as they are rather informative about, about an important part of the game, the heroes themselves. So we were thinking about doing something similar for the main antagonists of the game. So what does everyone think about having a boss spotlight? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, try to keep your stress low and your spirits high. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English, and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or you just want to see what he might spoil. He's kind of known for doing that because he loves sharing things with our community. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.